for like 60, 70 days ago, I stopped posting on my YouTube channel and a lot of you guys came to my comment, you know, to my YouTube comment, asked me, Ty, what's up? Like, what's happening? Like, you've not been posting. Hope no problem. Are you okay? Like, even on my Instagram page, you know, some of you guys came, asked me, are you okay? You've not been posting. Hope you're good. Hope you're fine. And, you know, I always read every comment on my page. See, even if I'm so, so busy and I'm tired, I will definitely read every comment. I will find time to read comments on my YouTube and reply to if I need to reply. What really happened is that uh, 60, 70 days ago, I, I was promoted at work, so like to a management position. And those period has been a transition period in my life whereby I moved just from ordinary, from being a normal staff into a management position. You know, this is what I always tell you guys. Like I moved from wearing this to now wearing just normal clothes. Maybe sometime if I'm in the field, I'll wear my PPE. So now, because, and I moved from just normal staff, now earning per salary. So now, now I understand how salary structure works. So you get to a position in this country whereby you will not be paid hourly anymore and you will be paid per salary. You know, they will just be like, okay, you take this money divided by 24 by weekly. And that is it. And if I'm to choose, I think salary, like, <laughs> we are here to make money. So now, why are we here in the cold in minus 20, minus 30, if not to make this money? So now, that is it. That's what I always tell you guys about trade work. Like, what I always tell you about trade. Like, trade is one of these industries whereby you will, there, there will always be an opening. Like, there will always be a promotion because who will they choose if not you? You've been, even if you start from zero, eh, and you started learning after six months, you'll have known one or two things on how it works. You'll have known one or two things and someone will leave. They'll be like, okay, you do it because it is better to promote you than bringing someone from outside. Because if they bring someone from outside, a new person, they will have to train that person, do orientation, you know, and some other, you know, some other things whereby there's no time. So it's always better for the company to promote internally. Trade is one of these industries whereby internal position is always available. I don't know, like internal position, like they'll just, they'll be like, okay, we don't, this person are left. Like, okay, you take over immediately. Like, you already know how to do it. You're part of the team. You take over immediately. Then someone, even if they want to, you know, do some posting, then it has to start from the bottom. They will not look for a person that will take up your job. So because it's very, very easy to train from the bottom than to train from the top. So it's the same thing. And after a while, if another person leaves, because people will always leave. You will never find that kind of industry except trade. If you work in in an office environment. There are so many people that have been working in, a, in in office environment for for 10, 15 years in that same position. They don't leave. Like they were just there. Leave or they don't leave. Because it, it's, it's an office environment. And I, like they have been working for 20, 25, 30 years in one position. But in the trade, people will always go. There will be always, there will always be an opportunity. That's one thing. Because if they work for like two, three years, they will see an opportunity with another company, they will leave. And who, who has the day one or the, who has will the company choose if not you? Because you've been there for like two, three years and you're part of the team, you know how it works, you know, even if they want to do orientation, like they want to orientate you, they will only, only orientate you on one or two stuff, not all on how to be the best in that position and not start from the scratch again. Then that is just, that is what I'm saying. Like, Trade industry is is what is the best in Canada now. Like you have so many incentives, so many benefits. And I don't know, like even you start as a forklift operator, after a while you will learn something, you will and so far that you're not lazy, there will always be an opportunity in the trade world position. The company I work for, they are expanding, they just won a contract and uh, they are opening different branches and I just have to, you know, they need someone, uh, you know, that knows everything, like, that, that can work independently, you know, to take over a position and, hey, now I'm there. So, like, for the past 60, 70 days, was a, it was a tough time in my life. And, oh, <laughs> especially knowing people's names. I'm very, very bad in knowing people's names. Like, 
in memorizing their name and I have to go through a leadership uh, course and you know just to learn how to memorize people's name because it's always better to call them you know to know people's by name like you you know like it's all people always appreciate if you can call them by the name like the oh how are you doing what's your name my name is this and the next day you can call them by the name and not you know using slang and all that and before i always call people by boss at work i know my colleague's name like my close colleague but the others like i don't know like you can't expect me to know like more than 100 200 people's uh, you know by the name like i i always call everybody boss but you know that like ninja mentality now whereby everybody's chairman and every other thing that is the same thing i always use at work my close colleagues i know all of them you know but the others boss 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 hey i saw boss how you doing like how's your day going and that's just it but this time around i had to like go back to the table and start memorizing each and everyone's name and also it has been a very tough period and also another thing is microsoft excel yeah i like excel in normal primary level is different from excel in the advanced level so i had to like go back to the drawing table and start learning excel because any single mistake any single thing is fucked so it was it was so 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 tough for me like and thank god you know uh my colleague my supervisor manager everyone was there like if i need help i call the head office i call you know my people to assist me in, you know in sorting something you know guiding me in how to do some other thing because hey like <laughs> you trust me and that is it but right now i'm good like seriously speaking they don't even they always ask me do you need anything i'll be like no no i'm good i'm good and now i know everything and it's all good so now, what, what i'm saying is that why i'm bringing out this topic is uh, a few years ago when i came to canada you know i i i first landed in calgary and i stayed in calgary for like two three weeks and i was like hey i cannot live in this big city not because calgary is bad i love calgary you know and i have so many friends and family in calgary and when i came into this country i don't have any family like family like not um blood family like i came i don't have friends i don't have anybody but with time i get to know people and they are also my family so i don't have anyone but i'm this kind of a guy that i love a quiet town i love you know i just love places that are quiet place that i can move to uh i can move from point a to point z with within few minutes so I have like three or four options there, you know, just to go to move to Grand Prairie or to go to Inton or maybe to come to Fort Mac or to go to like another city, yeah, maybe Code Lake, yeah, in Alberta. You know, like these are four rural environments, you know, rural community in Alberta here. Yeah. So, but later I just be like, let me come to, let's go to Fort Mac. So I came down to Fort Mac and my first job here was uh, I work in the staples. And that is one thing about, one thing I understand about living in the rural community is that if you, there's another YouTuber in this, uh, there's another content creator, you know, on YouTube. I think her name is Joyce. So she's a mother. She's, she's very, very good. And if you are following her, you know that the way she talks, the way you think is different from, the way she thinks, like, the way she talks, her content is different from every other um, uh, um, content creator, especially people that lives in the urban area. Like, if you live in the rural Canada, you will your the way you reason is different from people that live in the city. Like, we are the we are a product of our community, of our environment. So, I moved to Fort Mac, and my first job was working in the staples if you know like you if you you are in canada and you know staples well so i had like minimum wage maybe like 15 dollars then like yeah it's around 15 dollars maybe like 15.5 or 15 point something child. my first job my first salary after two weeks was around 600 dollars like if you are watching me outside canada you 600 dollars is nothing like it might be something to you but yeah 600 dollars is nothing my house rent then is around 1300 you know um i need to pay you know uh my both phone bills every other miscellaneous you know transportation and everything like working in staples you understand like 
if you've worked in, um, in that kind of environment, you bear me witness, you have to be standing. Like you will stand for eight hours, for nine hours, if you're nine hours shift. And at the end of the day, how much are you earning? $15 per hour. And one thing about this thing is that if you stand in, or like if you just be like, okay, let me sit down, let me just relax somewhere, or you hide somewhere, somebody somewhere, like you have one of your colleagues that will always be monitoring you, that, you know, like on one supervisor that his job or our job is just to be looking at you like, hey, where's this guy? Like, uh, you're sitting down, you're not doing anything, like blah, 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 blah. So it was a very, very stressful job for me. And I'm like, if make a cuckoo, like, let me just look for a job that will be stressful and that will pay me better. Like, that will pay me much money. Like, pay me for my energy. Even if it's construction or even if it's any job I need. At least let me be using my energy for some other thing that's worth it. Instead of using my energy, you know, using all this energy working in for minimum pay. So that's why I was like, I just tell myself, like, let me look for another job. I said to myself, like, hey, I need to move. Like, I need to look for another job. So I looked for another job. I applied to so many companies. And the company that called me back was an heavy duty uh, rental company. So they rent every, like, if you see my back now, so you see, like, they are doing some work there. So, that, like, every equipment, you know. Uh, like that is it. So now the company that I work for rent out all those heavy equipment, like excavator, you know, telehandler, and every other thing. It's one of the biggest uh, rental company in North America. So they called me back and I did an interview. You know, I they get they, they, my manager then was well, you know my manager was asking me like hey ta- like can you operate uh, all these equipment? Do you have an idea in all these equipment? I said no, and that is it. Like I don't have any idea. Like seriously, I don't have idea in nothing. But I said to the man then, I said, if you can train me, you know, I'm ready. Like I will learn, you know, I, I will, um, I'm, I'm a very fast learner and I'm not going to disappoint you. So I said, okay, don't worry, we'll give you a shot. So, and they employed me then. It, it was a very, very tough job. Uh, it, well, my first position was a yard, uh, tech. So I'm in the yard, you know, um, one thing about the yard tech is that you will be, outside in the sun in the rain in the snow in all weather like all weather i'm always outside you know attending to customer loading unloading these and that you know you know just to do anything pick up drop off so during that position i learned a lot of things in about every uh duty uh, equipment you know how to operate how to maneuver how to this like every every equipment like every equipment in every duty always pass through me and I learned how to operate them. I learned how to control. I learned everything about it. So what is like later on, uh, you know, I was promoted, you know, to an equipment associate and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. So now when I got employed, uh, I'm this kind of a person, even my boss, my manager said it, you know, then like, Hey, this guy is so quiet. And my own is I come to work. I do the job and I go home. I'm not there to make friends. They are my colleague. They are not my friend. And I'm not even at work to make, make friends. So like, and I'm, the thing is that I'm not there to make friends. And also I'm not there to make enemies. I'm going to treat you as my colleague and treat me the same, respect you. Give me my regard because I'm giving you the regard. So that is how I work. Like I'll come to work, do my job. I don't, nobody report me. I don't have any trouble with anyone. I don't have any chaos, even as a black guy. And one thing about we black guys that, you know, black person is we just have to do our job for them to see. Because no matter what, there's always somebody watching you. Like we are different. It's just like an Abino in the army. Definitely, people will know that you are somewhere. Like, people will always be monitoring you. And that is it. It's something like me working in an, a trade in, in a trade environment, a trade industry whereby most people are white. Like, mo- I'm the only black guy there. Like, I'm the only black there. And no, there's only somebody watching you. 
you are hiding, no, you are not hiding, no, you are doing something, you're not doing something. Normally, there will always be somebody watching you, watching your house, like, hey, that guy is lazy, that guy is working hard, oh, that guy is doing nothing, that guy is doing something. So I treat my job as a job, you know. You know sometimes my manager just texts me, like, hey, can you come 5 a.m.? You know, like, there's a truck coming, you know, with some equipment, and you need to help, you know, man unload or, you know, take care, open the gates and all that. I'll, I'll show up by 4.30. Because of what? My, you know, you'll be very happy. I'm like, man, this guy is always there. But me, now over time now, you understand. See, the, the job is not hard to me. I'll just come do whatever I want to do. But to them, they'll be like, this guy coming. I just text him overnight, like 10 a.m. Uh, 10 p.m. yesterday. And he shows up, he replied. Sometime, maybe 11, as soon as he receive a call, like, oh, there's a driver coming from Edmonton and all. So... I will, and he will just be like, he will text me, hey, sorry, can, can you come, can you show up by um, 5 a.m., like, can you show up by 6 a.m.? I will come, I will, I will, I will reply, oh, no, no worry, I will show up, because it's, I'm going to, you are going to pay me for the job, for the overtime, and overtime now, money now, and that is it, so I'm always, I took the job, I, I'm always dedicated with the job, like, hey, Tell me what to do, I'll do it. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna mess it up. So and that is one of the things. Like I I was if I need something, the company will send it. You know, one thing about trade industry that if you need anything, they will send you to school. When I started, every certification that I have today, I was sent to school and they didn't pay like I didn't sign any contract. You will not sign any so far what you you know, like you they understand that you will be part of them, like you're already part of the family you're already part of the coming you are not going anywhere they will send you to school and you will not sign any i have never signed any contract you know i just got a certification last week and which cost tens of thousands of dollars so i've been doing the course for a while now and people were like you didn't sign any contract i said this company i've been working with this company for years so <laughs> i'm not going anywhere like why would they allow me to sign anything like because i didn't join i'm not a new staff and also it's the same thing like if you're working with a company especially in trade and they believe in you they know that you're dedicated with what you're doing so no matter what they will send you to school if you, they need to send you to school they will get you on the certification if they need to get you that certification if this education is within their means they will pay. And the thing is, there are so many federal and provisional state grants. Like if you check on Alberta, I mean Alberta, if you check on Alberta trade grants, there are so many trade grants, like provisional uh, grants whereby your company has to, it will be the one to get it for you. And the, the, the company will pay 50%, the Alberta government will pay 50% of the, so for any certification, you know, because they want people to improve, people to get certified. And, so in trade, especially we immigrants. So like there are so many certifications like that, whereby the, 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 even there are some that is 80% and the government will pay the remaining 20%, some 30, 70%. So your company will be the one to apply for that grant for you and they'll pay whatever left balance that they have to pay and they'll send you to get it there to get certified and all. That is how it works in trade. So it, you cannot get that opportunity in any other industry. And I don't know, like, I will always remember the day that I start, you know, in this industry because I can never get any other, uh, all this opportunity, all this certification from just nobody, you know, and start getting, you know, uh, to what I, where I am today because in trade, people will always leave. Like, people will always leave. In office job, there are, you will see people there for 30 years, 35 years in that position, but in trade, in, people will always leave. The company will always expand. If you're working with the right company, they will always increase. They will always get a new contract. And who, who, like, who are they going to send if not you? Who are they going to transfer to take over the position if not you? Because you already know you are part of them. And so now, wh why I'm saying this is that I I realize one thing about people, one thing about we immigrants in Canada is that so like I said earlier, we are a product of our environment. And and one thing about Canada is that. Where you are will determine the people you associate with will determine how your future will be. Like the the first set of people, the first set, the first airport you land, like the first set of people you meet, you know, you associate with, and all that. Your environment will determine where how 
you know, might even, like, I don't even want to say will determine because we are all different and all, but might determine how your life is going to be. So, especially in this country, if you come into this country as a student and the first set of people you associate with are asylum seekers, there's a high chance that you might later apply, you know, apply for asylum because everything you will be seeing will be you know, we'll be like, uh, okay, you like, you'll be, will you be seeing the importance of, uh, you know, applying for asylum in the country. You'll be seeing the benefit of, you know, asylum seeker. You'll be seeing every other thing that they are enjoying and all that. It's the same thing. So there are so many people in the big city and we have so many, we have some people in the rural community, but I always say rural, Albert, rural Canada has the best thing to offer. See, people don't just, if you come into Canada anytime soon and you don't have anybody, in Canada, like you're coming, nobody, you don't have any family here, then why are you going to Toronto to live? Why are you going to Ontario? That place is overcrowded. Look for another city. So even Alberta is getting overcrowded, like especially Calgary, especially Edmonton. So, but it's still better than living in Toronto. Like, though I'm not discriminating, I'm not saying it's bad, but a job that will pay you $30 here they will be paying you nineteen twenty dollars over there because there are so many people now. Like if you don't do another person go do that is what I always say. Like I don't know. Like the way we that lives in the rural um community in Canada, the way we think is because I can I can if if I want to get another job right now, like I want to leave you where I'm working, I can get another job within a week or two. So, because there are jobs everywhere, like, it's not, though things are changing, but still, you're already in the system. So, do you already have the, um, you know, the experience? You already have everything. So, like, you definitely get one ASAP. So, now, it's always better if you come in anytime soon, or maybe you're in Canada and, you know, you're still thinking of, oh, man, like, this, what I'm doing is, is, is not okay. You know, you are still, uh, you, like, the job you're doing is not okay. Or you, you don't like it. Go elsewhere. See, even Canadians move. Like, Canadians move. They'll just be like, man, we are going to, uh, we are going to Saskatoon. We are going to Newfoundland. We are, they, so Canadians, all these white people, they move. If they didn't, like, if they search for jobs and they can't find one, they will just move to another community. Then why not you? So, so many opportunities in big city, but come, like, Still, we have so many people. You are competing with different, 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 different people. At the end of the day, you apply for jobs. Nobody will, have, you know, um, no, you will not see any reply. The next thing is, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's because you are competing with so many people. But in the rural side of Canada, I don't know, like, I'm not saying, okay, come to Alberta, come to anything, but look for one area that is developing. Look for a rural side, then you go to start your life there. It is always better to start, you know, in a very rural community, then build your life. It's very, very easy to build life. So now, right, here. with the end of my video, like, if you have any co comment or you have anything to ask me, don't forget to drop as a comment below, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, bye-bye.